Good afternoon, friends. We're, we're, we're enjoying a fun game with the lights. We just wanted to see what John would do <clears throat> and what you would do when you were like, whoa, someone's next to me and singing, right? <clears throat> I will give you a treat, though. What you didn't see is because everyone's standing up here looking this way and you're all looking this way. I got to dance in the back. There it is. <laughs> now it's their turn to make faces and stuff in the background, so it was fun. Um, so now you can't fall asleep on me. I got you. Ready? Good. So now you're like, oh, come on. <clears throat> um, so I just wanted to echo real quick one announcement, and that was the members meeting. We have an annual membership meeting that's next week, and some of you might be saying like, hey, can we go to that if we're not a member? And the answer is yes. Um, <clears throat> we want to encourage anybody to come to that that wants to. It's going to be really great because what we get to do is we get to update and celebrate all the things that have been going on in the past, this past year. And then um, we're going to be casting vision, talking about a bunch of things that are going to be coming up this next year, including some really big conversations about the campus in San Francisco and what's going on with that and kind of an update. So we didn't want you to feel like it was just exclusive. It's completely inclusive. Um, the only thing that members are going to be doing specifically is voting on a few things. And you might come do it and then decide you want to be a member afterwards. So that's all fantastic and good. There's no loss there. All wins. So next week, uh, it's at 1 o'clock, so right after this service. So if you already come to this service, it's a good opportunity for you to stick around. We're not going to have munchies, though. But you're free to stick around for 70 minutes or so, and we'll do that. <clears throat> um, we are in the third week of four weeks. Next week, I'm going to finish off this series called Now What? Which is all about seasons. And uh, the thing is that so we're all kind of coming into a season or we're going to be in a season or always kind of looking to what's next. And the first week we talked about how it's really important to build habits and healthy habits of doing what we've heard um, and building our foundation on a rock and um, putting into place good habits that are healthy for us um, that really gives us freedom. So when we get into next seasons, whether they're good or they're difficult, we have, we're prepared. We have healthy habits in place. Last week, Carl was here. He got to share with us about um, whatever the next season being and that we're fearful for, but making sure that we turn our fear into faith and uh, gave some really good key points on, um, on that. And this week, I wanted to talk um, again in the, this holistic idea, but on some very specific points on how we can be prepared for the next season. Because like I said, we're all headed into season. Some of us are headed into a, maybe a new school or graduation right now. Some of us are preparing to have a baby, um, what that looks like, or a wedding. Some of us are starting a new job, a new relationship. Um, some of us are in a place where we're getting, where we just moved into town. Um, or we're dealing with aging parents and kind of what that next season looks like. And some of us are even dealing with like some difficult seasons, um, which maybe you've just lost a relationship that you've had, or you lost a job, or maybe even you've lost a loved one, or you're dealing with new health issues that you've never thought you had to deal with before, whether it be with you or a friend as they're going for it. So ultimately what this conversation has been about, what we're going to tell you about, is how to prepare for what's next. How to prepare for what's next. Both the known and the unknown. Because there are things that we can see coming, that are, that are coming from a distance and we can plan for it. And there's things that we can't see um, that are coming, that just show up on us out of nowhere. Uh, and they surprise us, uh, the unexpected. Um, one thing that's not unexpected nowadays or shouldn't be unexpected is if you've ever gone on vacation recently and been surprised that it wasn't what you thought it should be. Example, you shouldn't show up anywhere now and be like, this isn't what it looked like, right? Or what they said it was like, because information today is crazy. The amount of information that is available to us and that we're able to intake is beyond anything like we've ever experienced or had in the past, right? With Yelp and Google reviews and, or even just Googling stuff, TripAdvisor, if those are things you do not use for stuff, I want to help you out. Use it. <laughs> you won't be dissatisfied. Uh, I even just stayed recently, this last weekend, my family had an Airbnb. And you have to give information about what was there, like, immediately. So my review is the most recent one, but it's specifically asking. They said the place looked like this or had this. Did it? And you have to say yes or no. And so we can go on and look and say, like, yeah, we know we should get the burrito without tomatoes. It's way better. Or we shouldn't stay in room 327 because, like, the lock's broken or something like that, right? So we know these things ahead of time because information. Information has gotten so crazy that between the year 1 A.D. 
in 1500s, information in the world actually doubled. So it took 1500 years for information to double. Then it took about 250 years. Then it went from 250 years for it to double to every century. It would double every century. Until World War II, it jumped to 25 years. It only took 25 years for all the information to turn over and double that we, it was available to us. Currently, now, and today, and what's projected in the next couple of years, is information is literally doubling in the world that were, is available to us every 12 hours. Yeah. Every 12 hours is turning over. That's what we have right in front of us. Whether, like I said, it's Google or we could YouTube, that's why you're like, how do we do this? You can just YouTube, figure it out, right? You can get to answer the questions, like, how do I raise a kid? YouTube it. It's going to be great. <laughs> right? Or Google it. See what comes up. Right? All of these things, this information, social media. Um, and um, you might be entering into a season where you think that seeing what is coming next, seeing what coming next, it, it doesn't ensure that you're going to be successful in this next season. Because you're like, I got information. I have all this information in my hand. That's not going to ensure that you're going to have success. Think of it like a baseball. You're going to be up to bat. Someone's going to throw a baseball at you. Just because you see the baseball coming does not ensure you will have success in making contact or hitting it. Or, God forbid, seeing the car coming at you. <laughs> Just because you saw it coming doesn't mean there's going to be a successful outcome. Seeing what is coming next doesn't also ensure that knowing what the next season will require we don't always know exactly what the next season will specifically require. But what we do know is that whatever season that you're coming into, the truth is, is someone else has actually gone through it. Someone else has actually been there and done that, right? And uh, sometimes we can start to think, be like, well, Larry, that's not totally true. Like, we're like snowflakes. We're so unique, right? We're all different. We have our own unique thumbprint. You're right. We're unique. But here's the deal. Life isn't all that much of a mystery. If I was to take this room and line you up and we were to tell our stories, you would see that they're all very similar. <laughs> it, it wouldn't just be like, wow, I can't imagine. It would be like, no, 100%, I can't imagine. I've done that. I'm just a little bit ahead of you. Or I'm going into that. Or my kid did this. Or whatever it may be. My relationship did that. It's like thinking marriage is easier than dating, right? <laughs> It's all good. It's going to be great. When we get married, it's all going to be way better. And then you realize, no, that's not the case at all. It's the opposite. It's way harder. You've got to work at this stuff, right? And you're unique. And other people have gone through similar experiences to you in your own uniqueness, even in your unique family, in your unique health circumstance. Someone else has experienced what you are about to experience. They've been through that. They've had that kid, right? You, someone told you, like, you know, the sleep deprivation that you're going to experience. You know, you don't experience it until you experience it, and then, whew, right? But someone's gone through it. They've gone through um, dealing with their parents and their aging parents. Someone else knows specifically what you don't. Um, so when you go on a trip, let's say a trip is like going on seasons. You pack a bag, right? So there's some important things that you need to pack for future things that you're going to and that you're going to experience. And so some specific things that you always take on a trip is like a toothbrush, right? That's very actually important. Some toothpaste or mouthwash, probably some deodorant. That's important, just so you know. Just didn't know you were going to get so educated today. Nowadays, a charger, right? This is maybe one of the most important things to a lot of people, especially if you're 16. Um, <clears throat> like this is the big deal. And a lot of times we forget this little guy. Chargers, really important. Um, for a lot of you, uh, wine is important to bring to the next season, whether it's a good season or a bad season. It just needs to be in, in your life. <laughs> um, for some of you, as you're getting prepared for stuff, you need a map, right? And you got like the old school map. And some of you in here under 30 going, what is that? It's like a relic from the Smithsonian, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's a paper map. Some of you did the upgrade version. You actually went on MapQuest and printed out your directions. If you still do that today, can we meet? I want to make a transformation video with you. It's going to be great. It's so good. We're going to win today. It's so good. 
right? Another thing that we take on our trips is this guy right here. Whoop, there's my toothbrush. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the toothbrush is dead to me now. Okay, no. <laughs> a phone, right? And you're like, well, why would I pack a phone, right? Uh, this is also, my kids saw it, and they're like, wow, what's up with the old antique phone? And then, um, it was actually a couple weeks ago, there's a pay phone. Still, I th it might be the last pay phone in San Francisco. It was in the church in San Francisco. <laughs> no joke. And my daughter was there, and she picked it up, and she heard what's called a dial tone, right? And she was like, what is that noise? And I was like, it's called a dial tone. She's like, what is it? And I was like, I don't know. It's just a, it's a dial tone. She's like, I thought you were from the past. And I was like, I was, but it doesn't mean I know how the past, I don't understand, whatever. <laughs> don't even want to go to the party line thing, some of you in here, yeah. A phone, right? We need to take a phone. Um, how many of you guys are familiar with, there was a show that was really popular for a while, now it's I think on daytime television, called Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Yes. Yeah, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? And on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, you got three lifelines. And one of them was phone a friend, right? That you like were like, oh my gosh, looking to pick up. And like you had to make sure like, oh, you got to pick up. And are you going to have the right answer? Because you were struggling with something that you needed an answer for. And so you got to have a lifeline to phone a friend. Now, for us, just because we have a phone doesn't mean we use it, right? And I know I'm talking generalities. I'm not talking about today and texting and all that stuff. But Many of us do not take advantage of the phone that we need to take into this next season that's going to help us to be prepared for it. So when it comes to the phone and this lifeline and phoning a friend, there's a couple questions I want to ask you today. The first one is this. Do you have the right people on speed dial? <laughs> he said, what's speed dial? All right. Let's, we're going to go way back in the beginning. <laughs> no. Do you have the right people right there? <laughs> You can, yeah, that's good. <laughs> this one didn't have it. <laughs> do you have the right people on speed dial in your life? Do you have the right people? You can even look on your list right now of your favorites. We'll call it that. Of your favorites. Do you have the right people there? But even more importantly, the question is this. Are you willing to listen? You need to ask yourself this. Are you actually willing to listen? And especially in some uh, more emotionally charged seasons of our life. Some of us are in seasons where, like, love's involved, right? And love just blurs everything. Um, and then friends and family are like, mayday, mayday. And you're like, I'm not hearing it. I'm not hearing it because I'm in love. Like, <laughs> right? I just got the bright eyes for it. And you can't, and they're like, no, we're watching this happen, right? Because you're not willing to listen. And it's so tough to listen then because it's just emotional, Right? Or seasons where just family stuff's really difficult. And, you know, the, someone's watching you and they're, I've been there. I've done that. Let me come alongside of you. And they're like, no, you don't understand. You don't understand my issues or my daddy issues or how our family dynamics work, right? And so it's just so difficult to listen in those seasons because they're just emotionally charged. They're extra emotional. Or when it has to do with our finances, you know, because it's either just personal or embarrassing or we just don't even know what to do with it because it's emotional, right? And it's attacking us and wearing us down, and, and we're just not willing to listen or pull um, the lifeline out to use it. Um, it says in Proverbs 11, we're going to get into a handful of Proverbs. A guy named Solomon wrote these. He was known as the wisest man that lived, wrote us some Proverbs, so there's some great scripture we're going to pick up from. It says, for lack of guidance, a nation falls, but victory is won through many advisors. Now you might say, uh, that's super dramatic. <laughs> like, if you're trying to tell me right now, if you're trying to make this connection, that a lack of picking up the phone and talking to someone means that I'm going to fall apart, <clears throat> then I think that's a stretch. I would propose to you right now that it's not. That it is that important for your life and whatever season you find yourself in from here on out. That it's just that important. Um, we, um, <clears throat> we um, tend not to ask people um, for help uh, or to pick up the phone for a couple different reasons. And I just wanted to land there for a second because I think it's that important. And maybe these are some excuses that I've used, that you've used. But I wanted to first ask, what, what keeps us from asking others when we're coming into these seasons? 
And the first thing I would say that keeps us from asking others is that we already know. How many of us have been coming into another season or in a season and we're just like, I already know. I Googled it. Or for centuries, people have figured this out. I can figure that. I already know. Or how many of us have said, not only I already know, I already know what you're going to say. I already know what they're going to say. <laughs> You've probably been told that before. Like, I didn't ask you. I already knew what you are going to say. And then you thought for a second, how do I say what they didn't think I was going to say? That's super profound, right? <laughs> so you're, like, preparing uh, your next statement. It says in Proverbs 26, 12, do you see a person wise in their own eyes? There is more hope for a fool than for them. You've met these people. They're like, yeah, kid, you know it all. You were a wise person. And then you sit back and watch the train wreck, right? You're like, you're going to learn right now. You think you know it all. You think you know exactly what this looks like. You think you know that you can do this or you can't do that. There's more hope for somebody else than someone who just thinks that they're wise and they already know it all. And what that's mostly wrapped up in is pride, right? And we all need to hear that so often. It's pride. Pride specifically keeps us arrogant. Asking someone else for help, picking up the phone and saying, hey, you've been there, you've done that, can you help me with that? That makes us feel like we're ignorant. So we put the phone down. And we just lean on arrogance. It being prideful about it, when really, friends, we need to lean on ignorance and having an open hand and a posture of learning and being willing to ask people for help. Because pride can do some really gross things in our, health, uh, in our life. Muhammad Ali, he was a, a famous heavy, heavyweight boxer. And uh, if you, uh, there's actually a documentary that was out recently. I was watching that. And, you know, if you know anything about Muhammad Ali, he's got a big mouth. Talks big, super boastful, intimidating with that. It's a mind game. You know, he's the man, right? He won a, a championship, a, a boxing match, and then later on that evening got on a plane to go back towards home, <clears throat> and the stewardess came by and said, sir, you need to put on your seatbelt. And he responded with, Superman don't need no seatbelt. So then she looked at him and said, Superman don't need no plane. Put on your seatbelt, right? <laughs> That's good. Sounds like somebody's mama, right? <laughs> pride, right? How often do we find ourselves in a prideful situation where we're just like, I don't need a seatbelt. I got this. I already know. I already know what you're going to say, right? I'm good. I know what's going to happen. Here's the deal, friends. This is how you can help fix this. Knowing that you don't know is the first step to knowing what you don't know. <laughs> Knowing what you don't know, that's the first step to knowing what you don't know. You have to be willing to say, hey, I don't, I don't know this stuff. I haven't had this happen to me before. I haven't dealt with this situation before. And you'd be willing to pick up the phone. And the thing that maybe you should use as a thermometer or the siren or the flashing red light that says shift something is that if you're sitting here saying, I don't know, right? Or no, if you're sitting here saying, I already know or I already know what somebody's going to say, then you should probably realize that you just identified an area where you need to ask for help. It could be as simple as this. So I'm getting ready to go into this next season. I think I understand what it should look like, but I really can't screw this up. Am I right in the way I'm thinking? And you can get good advice. Um, I think I already know what you're going to say about this, but will you tell me what you would say about this? And you can learn from that right? It should be a, a beacon that says, yo, ask someone else to make sure that what you're doing in the future doesn't fail and you can get through the next season in a healthy way when you're sitting there, right? The um, next thing that keeps us from asking others, what keeps us from asking others, is that um, we're too afraid to be honest. Just honestly. <laughs> we're too afraid to be honest, right? We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. We looked at the mirror. We're too afraid to look in the mirror and call out what is in the mirror and see where we are. Mark Twain says this. He says, everyone is a moon. We all have a dark side. And we work really hard to not let anybody see our dark side. We're too afraid not to be honest. And life works best, friends, when we have 
trusted advisors or mentors or people that we can be honest with and show our weakness to, right? That's how the body works. So you'll be like, well, what's the body? Well, many authors throughout Scripture um, reference this group of people right here as a body that works together, just like a body does. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, eyes and ears, mouth and nose. That's how I remember that. <clears throat> there you go. Just taught somebody something. So good. But what happens if the knee starts to hurt, right? The knee gets into a new season. All of a sudden, the knee is going, something's not right. And it screams, ow. The hand doesn't say, suck it up. Keep going, right? What the hand does is part of the body when the knee goes, something's not right. Something just changed. Something's a little different right now. The hand reaches down and grabs it and holds it and says, we need to help you. Let's figure out what's going on with you. Let's come alongside of you. This really beautiful thing happens to hundreds of you, actually, every single week. There's hundreds of people that are in circles, small groups, serving, right? Where we're in rows right now. This week, at some point, they'll get into a circle, and there's community that happens. And you've experienced this, and you see how the body works, and you're hanging out in your circle, and you're having a conversation with each other, and weeks have gone by, and people are sharing, and finally you get to that one person who's going to share, and they're going to share their story, and they share, like, the not G-rated version, but the whole version of what's going on in their life, and everyone goes, whoa, right? Where's the wine? No, I'm joking. <laughs> Like, whoa. So then they say, time out, time out, time out. Is that what we're doing here? Because if that's what we're doing, can we all reshare now? Because we didn't know we were going there. Like, it's real. And what happens is actually beautiful when the body comes together and gets to support and lift up and build into. The same thing happens when we build community in other ways. You know, our uh, vision statement here is transforming our homes, communities, and world by three different things. Pursuing God, building community, and unleashing compassion. Building community is so important here because in building community, on all of those, when you're together with a group of people, whether it be serving or in a small group, you get to have fun. Yeah, people are fun. You get to make friends and you follow Jesus. And you get to care for each other in the body. It says uh, in Proverbs 15, 22, it says, plans fail for lack of counsel, but many, uh, but with many advisors, they succeed. Plans don't fail for lack of planning. Plans don't fail for lack of effort. Plans don't fail for lack of desire or pure motive, right? But what? Counsel. Picking up the phone. Some of us struggle with this so much, and maybe this week we need to find that person that we can be honest with. And pick it up and say, hey, you know what? I'm getting ready to go in a season where I'm sending my kid off and they're leaving the house and it's going to change our relationship. I just need to be honest with how our relationship's been. Or, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm changing in this next season. My job's shifting and the time that we have together and it's going to change the amount of time that my spouse and I see each other. I need to be honest with someone first about how my relationship with my spouse is right now. So I don't really mess that up. And you've already been there. You've already gone through that. You've already sent your kid off. You, I, I, I'm, I'm going to be really honest right now. I'm really freaking out because I don't know what I'm going to do to honor my parents, right, as they're transitioning to this next stage. And I don't know if we have the money to take care of them like we need to take care of them or honor them, right? Or I don't know if, if I'm prepared for retirement in the way that I thought I was going to be and take care of. How can I make good, stable decisions because you've done that you've already been there you've already lived in that season or you're there right now we need to not be so afraid of being honest about where we're at and our vulnerability and walk into that and pick up this lifeline and ask other people that are right there ready to help us so our plans can succeed with lots of counsel the third uh, thing that keeps us from asking others is for a lot of us we just don't know who to ask right we're like Nobody's on the other side of the phone. I don't even know who to ask. I don't even know where to start with. Um, Proverbs 13, 20 says this. <clears throat> it says, walk with the wise and become wise. For a companion of fools suffers harm. Essentially what he's saying is, hey, um, find people that you want to emulate. Find people that already know some of those seasons you're going through. Find somebody maybe with a little more gray hair than you, right? And learn 
and have open hands and ask questions because Google's not going to give you all of that, right? Walk with them, the people that you want to be like. And for some of you, you don't know who they are, and so right now your first step is to start praying for that person. God, who's this person that I could ask? Who's this person in my life that I should seek out and learn from and put on my speed dial? For some of you, you're like, I don't even know if I can figure that out. I would suggest get involved in just about anything we do here. I just told you about what building community looks like, and we mean it when we say it. That's how we make a big church small, (laughs) is in community. Get involved because you all of a sudden will be in a group, and you will find people that you like and that are like you and that will carry you in seasons, and then you have a place to carry them as well. God speaks to us through his word and the wisdom we talked about today, but he also speaks to us through his people, right? And I think that's a really healthy thing, because I think most of us might wet ourselves if God actually talked to us, right? But he speaks to us through people, right? And he will use you to speak to other people when you are an authentic community, and you're in circles, or you're serving together, because you're having fun, you're making friends, and you're following Jesus. So you're like, well, well, how do I choose the right person, right? The right person to call and have this with. Well, you choose somebody who's going to ask you tough questions. That's really important. Choose somebody who's going to ask you tough questions. Choose somebody who has nothing to lose by telling you the truth. Now, this is kind of a difficult one, and I would even say, Choose someone that cares more about you as a friend than about the friendship, right? That's not going to be a yes person. Now, I want to clarify something real quick. I am not giving you permission to go like, that's what I need to do. I have someone I need to talk to right now because I care about them as a friend more than our friendship. No, no, no. You do that first. This is about what you're inviting into your life. You invite someone to be able to talk to you like that first before you invite yourself to talk to anybody else. You follow? I need to make sure I clarify that one. Because you're going to be like, Pastor Larry told me I got something to say. <laughs> uh-uh. Uh, choose someone who you just want to be with. Man, how, how nice is that? I know, it's so simple. But choose someone you want to be with. You want to be like. You want to do life with. That's going to give you love and grace and truth when you need it. It's a really beautiful beautiful thing that happens, just being with someone um, that you want to be with and that wants to be with you. Sometimes, friends, asking is the most difficult thing. What I've realized, some of the best mentors and advisors, I've had the privilege of being mentored by crazy people, like such gifted leaders in huge organizations and so much more experience and life experience with me. And and people would be like, "How, how do you get to do that? Like, how do you get to hang out with them? Or how do you get to learn from that person? And it's the craziest thing. I just asked. I invited myself in. They're like, well, what do you mean? And I said, I just discovered this. So this is, here you go. Here's the cheat sheet. You might even be able to find the CEO of your company might mentor you because you just asked. It's the weirdest thing. I started calling these people and saying, finally figured out how to get a hold of them. Hey, would you maybe mentor me for the next year? And they said, well, yeah, yeah, well, well, what do you want to be mentored for? Well, I just want to have somebody I can pick up to get wise counsel for all these different seasons. And, you know, you can ask me tough questions. You can do all these things I'm talking about. And then they gave me a response just about 90% of the time of yes. And I said, well, why? Why did you say yes? I mean, doesn't everybody want to do this? And they said, actually, no one ever asks. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? Yeah, everyone just always assumes that's just naturally happening, right? But no one ever comes with a learning posture that says, I need a lifeline. I don't need a whole lot else from you, right? That's one really simple thing we can do is just learn to ask because you never know. They might say yes. But let me tell you this. D- don't, don't send me an email tomorrow because I got too many already. <laughs> no, <I'm sorry. laughs> I was like, I'm going to ask him. No. <laughs> That's great. Um, so asking. So here's a refresher real quick. What keeps us from asking others? We think we already know, right? We think we already know what they're going to say. We think we already know how to deal with the next little season because we've seen it or we've read about it, right? The other thing is we're just too afraid to be honest. We need to learn to be vulnerable and open, right, and deal with this. And we just don't know who to ask. So we need to work on finding the right person to ask or just asking in the first place. What keeps you, friends, from asking? Whatever that thing is, 
will keep you from thriving in life. And again, you're like, that sounds so dramatic. I'm being serious. I've watched it. You've watched it. And some of you have experienced it. But you have no one to grab the phone and pick up as a lifeline when you need it. So, well, how do you thrive in the next season, Larry? I'm glad you asked. I've been waiting to tell you this whole time. It's real fast. You ready? This is how you thrive in the next season. Just ask these questions. These are the questions you ask. What do you think of yourself? What do you think you know? What do you think that you know? What don't you want to hear? If you already know the answer to that one, what, what don't you want to hear? Where are you not being honest right now? And then lastly, who can you actually ask this week or right now, today? Who can you ask today to be that person or to, to give you advice about the season that you're coming into, right? Who can you actually ask this season, this week, or today? Because the, the truth is, is there's a lot of information out there, and there's going to continually be more and more information out there. But if it was just a matter of knowing it, you would have already done it. And none of us would have issues, right? But what we need is relationship with someone because that's just the way that we were wired. Would you stand with me? So our theology is um, really simple here. Whatever we talk about, and uh, asking sounds like such an easy concept, and some of you came in here today, and you may be feeling dead, you may be feeling lost, you may, may be feeling broken. And what you need to do is you need to ask Jesus if he'll do the transformative work on you and your heart that only he can do. And for some of you, that's the next step today because there's nothing, nothing so dead that he cannot resurrect again. There's nothing so dead that he cannot resurrect again. There's nothing so lost that he cannot find. There's nothing so broken that he cannot begin a mending work in. If you ask, you have to step into that and allow him to do the work that only he can do. And so for some of you, your next step today, your first step is to ask a lot of questions. We have a journal for you. It's called This Changes Everything. It's a 21-day journey that has answers to a handful of questions but allows you to ask a ton of really difficult ones as you're walking into this next season and allowing him to do the work that only he can do, right? So for some of you, that step is today, go out in the lobby, grab one of these books, and um, go from there. If you're on a journey and you're just like, hey, I'm like okay with picking up the phone and kind of listen to what the, is the other end. If this is what needs to be on the other end, then walk out there and take it. It's a gift from us to you. Some of you just need to go and ask someone. You already know that you're coming to that season or you're hurting, and today you need to find the person that you need to talk to because they've already been there. They've done it. You need to get rid of your pride, and you need to get uh, a bunch of ignorant, right, and just say, I'm ready to learn. I'm going to lean on that. And you're going to let some sirens go off, and you're going to start asking some questions. And you're going to ask those questions of God and allow God to speak through his people. For some of you, you're going to get into community. Your next step is to get into community. Get into a group. Start serving somewhere because you're going to find your people. You're going to find a group of people you can do life with. So for some of you, this is your first time, and your next step is to come back and check us out. Give us a couple weeks, get to know us. We get to get to know you and uh, see where that takes us. And then there's some of us that are going to step up in our generosity and love on our students and the camps that are going on or just the ministry that's happening around and through here in the Bay and uh, the Dollar Club stuff. So I'm so thankful for all of the next steps that we get to take as we pursue God and who he is and he prepares us for the next season. Would you let me give you a blessing? We have our palms out. We just say, hey, I give up. I receive. God, may we be blessed this week by asking questions. And God, would you speak through others? Would you speak through your word? Would you speak through your spirit to us and prepare us for whatever may be next and in the season we're in now? I love you, friends, so much. I'll see you next week. I know a place.